one of the hot issues. We're going to have to leave it there. Move on to another of the big issues in rugby league, and of course that is Super League. And uh, please welcome Chief Executive of the Super League, John Rebo. John, welcome to the program. Yeah, First up... Got that money? <laughs> oh, look at that! <laughs> John, on a serious note, four de defectors during the week from Super League, from uh, the Bulldogs ranks. Uh, Durko has told us a little earlier that there could be another four from uh, Brisbane. Uh, is it worrying times? I mean, the, the Bulldogs have said they're going to sue. What's the Super League going to do about the defections? Well, uh, from the Super League's point of view, Bon, we have a contract with the players, so we expect those players to uh, fulfil that contract. So we'll take whatever action we have to, yeah, John, to make sure. Hang on, hang on to make sure that uh, make sure that that does happen. So, uh, Surely... in this whole issue, the thing I'm I'm uh, disappointed about. <laughs> Is the uh, is the uh, is the club? I think that the club's been shortchanged, and also their other teammates. So they did this as a as a as a bulk thing, and uh, now they've chosen to uh, turn their back on their teammates, and uh, that's very disappointing. We've already spoken about uh, you know Super League and ARL are in the courts at the moment. Are you going to pursue uh, legal avenues to get these players back that have already turned their back on your competition? Oh, very much so. I think that uh, we have a contract in place with them and we expect them to uh, so John, fulfil that contract. wouldn't you think that was somewhat hy hypocritical of you, uh, bearing in mind that you're questioning the loyalty of the ARL contracts and you're trying to say you're trying to enforce your contracts? I think if that's not hypocritical, I'm not here. But can we just... Can we just... Well, no, can, we, can, we, can we just, Mario, we'll get, take the emotion out. What, what's happened? We haven't asked any player, if you understand how the contracts work, to breach any contract. In the case of the, if there's an ARL contracted player who wants to come and do business with the, with the, Bronco, with the uh, Super League, what, what happens in, in, in that case? If that player gets independent advice from an independent solicitor, no one, nothing to do with Super League, and he's been promised he can play representative football, which is not the case now, he's been, he's been told that we, ha we have $2 companies, $2 companies where we won't pay our bills, that's simply not true, and he believes he has a case, well then he can come and do business is, with Is that us. what happened with John Cartwright and Rod Silver? Very much so. Well, the other thing that we've heard about these players, apparently these, a couple of the Bulldogs players said they came to the Super League hearing the innuendo and rumour about players getting a lot more money and they wanted an upgrade of their contracts. Yeah. Why wouldn't you have up, uh, upgraded them because, there? Because if this was just a, a, a principle of money, we would have came back and everyone says we've got this bucket load of money, we can give people whatever they like. We couldn't afford to give them what they were on. They were on a, sh oh, they were on a scale of payment. <laughs> they were on a scale of payment. There's a bit a of lot cash of money. going around. They were on a scale of payment consistent with everybody else. The money that I've got from the ARL has been doubled. I think the big challenge now to the ARL, they must go back to their other members as their, their players and upgrade their contracts to double their payments John, and be John, consistent. You, you still All they've tried to do question. is cheap shots. You still haven't answered my question. I said to you, do you think it's hypocritical of you to say you're going to sue these players who are under contract to the ARL anyway? Is that hypocritical? No, it's not, Mario. It's not. Have, no, what? Mario, Mario, if you understand contracts, if someone's promised I understand a contract, contracts, I've signed it for many, many like, years. I'll put it in simple terms for you. It's a, oh. bit, it's a bit like... Oh. It's a bit like... No, it's a, Mario, no, you don't that game, John, but I'm saying all I want you to do is answer the question. Yeah, a lot of times what? I've heard you talk, oh. you just beat around the bush and won't answer the question. Answer Mario, the question. It's a bit okay. like if you ask someone to build your house and you ask for a three-bedroom house, all of a sudden you come into your house, there's only two bedrooms there, you say, hang on, you've breached the contract. That's what I'm trying to say to you. If they're being promised to play representative football, that's no longer a contract if they can't play representative football. If they're told they won't get paid but it's proven they will get paid, that's no longer a contract. What I see as hypocritical, John, is the fact that you and all the other clubs signed these loyalty agreements to the ARL and then you're trying to, you're trying to say they don't count. Murray, I, see the, Murray, I think it's hypocritical. Murray, but that's your opinion. You, don't, you weren't yeah. there. You didn't have to sign the contract under the duress that the clubs had to sign under. Well, duress? They you were, had four well, or five well, days to think about. No, no, you didn't. We had 24 hours. And what they said, if you don't sign the contract, they'll kick you out of the competition. So let's put my other hat on with, when I was with the Broncos. Do I come back here and say, look, we don't want to sign that contract, get kicked out of the competition and come back to the sponsors, come back to all our supporters and say, they've just kicked us out of the competition because I wouldn't sign that contract. Is that duress or not? Can I just ask, ask a question, Reeves, on another matter, and I think this is something that a lot of people want to know. 
How can a player like, <coughs> excuse me, like Alan Langer, thanks Kevy for the flu, Alan Langer, who signed, who signed with the Broncos and the ARL, we, we would presume, until 1997, how can he play Super League next year? Can you very briefly explain yeah. how that what, will happen? What, what happens, you don't, a player doesn't sign a contract with the ARL, he signs a contract with the Broncos Football Club. The contract's not held with the ARL, it's held between the club and the player. What's happened there, and the Broncos have agreed to come and play with the Super League organisation. We've put that, the, the Super League licence into a company. The Broncos have then handed that, the, the players' contracts over to that company. That company, in, hand, in, in turn, is then handed back to the Broncos. So there's nothing illegal about that. That's, that's so all every, above every board. player every within player, the club, yep. but it would say a player from the Crushers, with, for instance, he'll have to serve out his contract. Well, that's contract. a different issue yeah, because the Crushers club have elected to stay with the ARL, so he'll which have to is their choice. No one the has club. a problem with that. So the, AR, the Crushers can stay and they play in the ARL competition. Well, well let's get on the Crushers choice. while we're talking about the Crushers, OK? Now, I've heard reports... Of, well, hang on. I've heard, I've heard reports of, of Paul Morgan saying there's no room for two teams in Brisbane. That's fine. I want to ask you, John, do you have an interest in the Broncos? <laughs> No, it's been asked a hundred times. No. I'm, I'm a shareholder of the Broncos. So you're I, a shareholder of the Broncos? No, no, please, can I answer the question? <laughs> I'm a shareholder of the Broncos when I was employed there as a chief executive. They gave me a 4% shareholding in the company. I have resigned all my positions from the Broncos, all my directorships. I think there's something like eight directorships I resigned from. I am currently selling back my 4% my, my to the company. There's a cooling off period of 90 days, which is a normal business transaction. So you're trying to say... You, 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 in terms of your position, you're not uh, biased towards the Broncos to say there's one team, we've got an exclusive Mar contract to say there's one team in Brisbane. That's another thing I really get confused with your attitude, is that you say you don't want, you, you, you don't want, you, you're, you're totally devoted to the, the ARL. In the next breath, why aren't another team in the competition? Well, you got, you can't, no, you're no. going to get a sore backside sitting is, on the is, fence. The, is the Crushers, the Crushers want to play in the, when all the drama settles, they want to play in the elite competition. And I think, as your supporters are telling you, John, that Brisbane does deserve two teams. So Have a look at the figures. Not even you could bodge you the figures to say that Brisbane can't, <laughs> Brisbane can't have two teams. I tell yeah, you, Mario, 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 can we talk... Now we'll talk some figures. If you, obviously, you're involved in the club. You know all the financials of the club. One of the concerns for the directors of the, of the crush is that they haven't been able to achieve, achieve their budgets on gate receipts. They might get a lot of people through there, but people are going to pay to go. They're not paying to go at the moment. So the gate receipts aren't anywhere on budget. So you say everyone's supporting. Everyone's supporting because no one pays. No, well, I disagree with you, but bearing in mind we're in the first year of our, of our, of our birth as a club and, and we believe with all the junior talent we've got at our disposal, we're going to develop like the Broncos did. The Broncos came in with a state of origin side. They won seven games that year. Right? How many games did they win? They came with the state of origin well, side. Well, a little bit more than seven. Well, well how many games? They didn't. They didn't. Well, they won their the first six. Now, all I'm trying to say is, what worries me is, obviously, you know, you guys are affiliated with the Broncos. It's no secret the Broncos were the prime mover in all this Super League drama. And then you're trying to say to the people in Brisbane, they, there's only room for one team. That is unbelievable. And it, Mario, uh, but what do you know about running a business or being successful? Another thing on, 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 the, on the position of the of the crushers. They came to us and they said, look, mate, we, we might like to have a look at this, uh, and we had an open mind on this, to have a look at coming involved with the Super League. They also said they needed some seeding capital to the tune of $3 million on top of their $4.5 million. So they expected $7.5 million to get going. Well, if we do that, we're going to give $7.5 million to everyone else. You're telling me John, how... You no, you're Mario, you're, bush, tell, you're, you're telling... You're avoiding the issue here. The issue is the Crushers want to play... The Crushers want to play in the first-class competition. The Crushers want to play in the first-class competition and politically... But do they want... Mario, do they want to do that? You're telling me you're, you're devoted to the ARL, then you want to go, then you want to go in, the, in the Super League well, competition. What gentlemen, we're do? getting a bit bogged down here. Yeah, if we, we can just move along. Tony, uh, uh, just move to a different yeah, angle for a minute. One thing, and I think a lot of people are, are also concerned, John, about, um, about getting the two groups getting together, the Australian Rugby League and the Super League. Can they get together? I mean, yesterday, Bob Fulton and Mal Meninga apparently kissed and made up. I mean, is there a sign there for... Well, I'm, no, I'm serious. They did. They, Bob Fulton and, and Mal Meninga did shake hands yesterday and agree to go along similar paths. Wasn't quite uh, tongue, Tony, on that, I think it's becoming more difficult. I think that uh, from day one, we wanted to do this with the ARL. Everyone was going to become a shareholder in this. And I mean everyone, the crushers, 
Every, every, every club is going to become a shareholder. They elected for whatever reason not to do that. The more we try and resolve things with them, the further apart right. we well, go. So we are totally dedicated to push ahead with a Super League competition which is going to go to the rest of the world where we are very, very enthusiastic about yeah. that. We know it's going to be good for rugby league, not just a few clubs, for rugby league. And that's going to be the All right, winner. so what you're virtually saying is there's no hope of, of, of the two stage, getting together. We've there's tried. going to be two separate competitions when Super League starts, whether that be next year or We're going year. to have a Super League competition. Next year. All right, there it is, fellas. We're going to have to leave it there. Please thank John Revo, Chief Executive of the Super League. It got pretty heavy there on the footy show. So we might take...